large city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. When the Civil War began in 1861, there was no special services, and the chaplain's corps was in its infancy. The serviceman, sick or well, in the field or in the hospital, was left to his own devices during his free time. Then, the YMCA's United States Christian Commission was organized, with the approval and support of President Lincoln. Some 5,000 volunteers, men and women, gave spiritual, moral, and medical relief to soldiers and sailors of both sides as well as prisoners of war. Six million dollars were raised to furnish supplies and do the work. They saved the lives of hundreds of fighting men and gave themselves untiringly. Today, along with the Civil War's 100th observance, the Armed Services Department of the YMCA is observing its centennial. Through the years, it has continued to serve our armed forces in this country and overseas. We salute the YMCA on the 100th anniversary of this work and for its services to young people of all races and creeds around the world. I don't think I like Dodge too much, Andy. Kind of scares me. Oh, it ain't a bad town, Millie. Besides, we'll only be here long enough to get the old wagon sold. Well, that's the livery stable, isn't it? Yeah. Who oh, there? Who? Oh. Who? Oh. Uh, this shouldn't take very long. Hello. Hello, stranger. You run this stable? I own it. Moss Grimmick. Well, oh. I'm Andy Cole. I had in mind to sell my wagon. Oh? I was told you might buy it. It's a good wagon. A little old, maybe. You must be kind of broke. We just moved into a shack down by the Arkansas, and we're looking to get a start somehow, but we need a little eating money till I find a job. I'll sell the wagon cheap, Mr. Grimmick. Well, maybe I can help you out. Let's have a look. What's that? Well, something spooked that team. They're running wild. Pull out! Pull out! Pull out! Pull out! Millie, Millie, are you hurt? Uh, I'm all right. Are you sure? Let uh, me help you down. I'm too scared. I can't. Shaken up so much. I should have jumped. Who was that man driving a team? Ed Fallon. He runs a freight line here. Now, Andy, don't start trouble. Well, the woman's all right, isn't she? Can't you handle them mules, mister? Now, Andy. You do that on purpose? Of course I didn't do it on purpose. Some drunk come out of the saloon and spoke to my... I feel terrible about this. Well, you ought to feel terrible. You nearly killed her, you darn fool. Andy! You... You got a bad temper, ain't you? You just bet I have. Well, so have I when I get riled. I'll fix you good for this. I'm waiting. Andy, stop it. Next time, you better be wearing a gun, mister. Oh, now you're threatening me with a gun. No, he isn't. And you're not going to start wearing one either, Andy. Well, we'll see about that. What's the trouble here? Hello, Marshal. Chester, it's a good thing you've come. Well, this man's threatened to come after me with a gun. Marshal. He smashed into my wife with his wagon. He didn't do it on purpose. I wonder he didn't kill you. He didn't kill me, though. I'm not even hurt. There's no cause for all this trouble. Uh, he shouldn't be driving mules if he can't handle them. What happened, Fallon? A uh, cowboy spooked my team and they run off. I couldn't help it. Well, you sure ain't done their wagon much good. Oh. We were going to sell it, too. Oh, 
Well, I'll tell you what. I'll pay for it. What's it worth? Never mind about that. With $20 covered... I ain't asking for money. I'll take it. We need that money. Why, sure. Sure. Here you are, man. Thank you. You're uh, pretty broke, are you? We're broke, all right. Well, maybe I can help you out. I'll give your husband a job starting tomorrow. Andy, you here? Yeah. Yeah, I hear, and I don't like it. Why should he offer me a job? It don't make sense. My gracious, Mr. Fallon's just trying to be nice to you. Looks to me like you could use a job, son. He's right, Andy. All right. All right, I'll try your job, Mr. Fallon, but probably not for long. You sure don't make it easy. Anyway, my office is right over there. I'll see you in the morning. And, uh, good day, ma'am. Good day, Mr. Fallon. Why, you see... It worked out fine, Andy. I sold a wagon and you got a job. Yeah. But I don't like that man, Millie. You got quite a temper, son. Why don't you just relax and take your wife on home? Yeah. yeah sure. Come on. Well, goodness me, he sure is a hothead, ain't he? Yeah. And a temper like that can cause a lot of trouble. Especially with a wife that pretty... some bandit riding up. I didn't know. No, I just wanted to be sure Andy wasn't home playing hooky while I was gone. Andy wouldn't do a thing like that. No, I was just joking. He's there on the job, all right, I'm sure of that. He's got three freight wagons to get loaded by noon. Andy's a hard worker. You're going to be real pleased you hired him, Mr. Fallon. Here now. You just call me Ed. We're friends, ain't we? Why, yes, of course. How about inviting me in for a cup of coffee? Well, I'm not sure that would be proper. No, it ain't nobody around. Ain't nobody to even know. Well, I... Millie, that job I give Andy, I'm paying him a dollar a day more than it's worth. I know. Well, I ain't sure I could use a cup of coffee. All right, Mr. Fallon. I'll make you a cup of coffee. Now, that's right neighborly, you, Millie. I like that just fine. Hello, Millie. Oh, Andy. Didn't hear you right up. No. What are you looking for? There's been somebody here. What? Well, maybe he was still around. I don't know what you're talking about. I've seen tracks outside, boot marks. Well, they're yours. No, they ain't mine. I don't wear Spanish heels. Now, who was here, Millie? Nobody was here. What's got into you, anyway? Now, don't you lie to me. You never lied to me. And I'm not lying now. Andy, you've been drinking. I'm never drinking. You know it. Who was here today, Millie? Nobody. Nobody was here. I won't stand for this, Andy. Well, I won't stand for it either. Where are you going? Andy. Andy, put that gun back. Put it back. You hear? You're covering up something, Millie. I'll find out who it is, and then I'll put the gun back. Not before. There you 
you on that. Thanks, Kitty. You know, that's better beer than we've been getting lately. Yeah, I think it is. Maybe I ought to start charging more for it. Uh, on second thought, kind of flat, isn't it? <laughs> You're a hard man, Matthew. <laughs> Say, uh, how's Andy Cole getting along in his job with Fallon? I don't know, Kitty. When I saw Andy today, he was wearing a gun. Well, that doesn't exactly make him stand out around here, does it? Yeah, that's the first time I've seen him wear one since he arrived in town. Oh? Uh-huh. Yeah, I asked him about it. He told me some man was visiting his wife yesterday. She wouldn't tell him who it was. I tried to talk to him, but it didn't do any good. No. Never does in a case like that. Evening, Mac. Kitty? Hello, Doc. Uh, sit down, Doc. Oh. How about a beer? Oh, no, I'd like that. Sam, bring Doc a beer, will you? <laughs> yes, Miss Kitty. You two look mighty glum. Is something wrong? I hey, was just talking about Andy Cole. Andy Cole? I met his wife today. Nice girl. Oh? Where'd you meet her? Here in town? No, I was driving by their shack by the river there, so I stopped and said hello. So you're the one? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Well, what were you saying about Andy? Well, Matt's worried about him. Andy's wearing a gun today for the first time. Well, what for? He suspects somebody's been visiting his wife. <laughs> Maybe he's after me, then. This isn't a joke, Doc. Well, no, uh, I guess it is. Andy's a good boy, but he's awful hot-headed. You know, this morning, I made Millie Coe a promise. But I think maybe I should break it. What are you talking about? She gave me a note to deliver. Asked me not to tell anyone about it. It was for Ed Fallon. Fallon? Did you give it to him? Yeah. Just now when it came in. He's standing right down there at the end of the bar. Oh, yeah. You know what was in the note? No, uh, she didn't say. Just that it had something to do with business. That's what she told you, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, you think it was something more? I don't know, Doc. But if Millie wrote a note to Fallon, it could be he's the one. Yeah, I'll be back. Oh. Fallon? Yeah. Ah. Hello, Marshal. It's on your mind. I want to talk to you about Millie Cole. What? Have you been seeing her? What business is it of yours would I do, Mark? <laughs> I'm trying to stop a killing, Fallon. I thought you might want to help. Uh, I believe in law and order. You know that. Then keep away from Millie Cole. Now, look, Mark. Andy's wearing a gun, Fallon. You saw him. If you have been seeing his wife and he finds out, he'll kill you. You seem to know a lot about this, Marshal. Enough to know that you got a note from her today. That note had to do with business. Whatever it was, I'm just warning you. Stay away from her. Well, what'd you find out, Matt? I can't pin him down. You tell him about the note? Mm hmm. Well, you'd never own up to it anyway. Well, I gotta make sure before Andy finds out. Why are you gonna do that? Go out tomorrow and talk to Maliko. Face her with it. Hope she tells the truth. I learned to jump double dutch today. It's fun. What, Susan, is double dutch? That's jumping with two ropes at a time. Anyone knows that. Uh-huh. Thank you. Susan is one of the lucky ones, one of the healthy, normal children we all give thanks for. She can run and skate and even jump double dutch. But there are over 250,000 other children in the United States who can't. They have cerebral palsy. They will never take part in active sports, maybe not even walk, but they can be helped. Through therapy and through special training, many cerebral palsied learn to live satisfactory and useful lives. 
There are 344 local affiliates of United Cerebral Palsy who support the hundreds of programs in hospitals, clinics, and special schools that are so needed. United Cerebral Palsy asks you to help. Contribute to the 53-minute march on cerebral palsy. Do it today. More coffee? No, thanks, my lady. Marshal, I don't know what makes you think Mr. Fallon has been visiting me. Andy's wearing a gun, Millie, and he means to use it. I know. Was it Fallon? Nobody's been out here except you and Doc Adams. Andy doesn't believe that. Do you? No. Marshal, it's true. What's the matter with you men? Don't you take a woman's word for anything? Andy. So, oh. Marshal Dillon. You're about the last man I would have suspected, Marshal. Andy, wait. You stay out of this, Millie. You just keep your hands where they are, Marshal. You're making a mistake, Andy. You've already made yours, and it was a bad one, a real bad one. Now, you listen to me. I'll kill you, Marshal. I swear I will. Andy, it wasn't the Marshal. No. Andy, I think it was Fallon. Fallon? I came out here to prove it if I could. And how are you going to do that? By facing Millie with it. She's a poor liar, Andy. Was it Fallon, Millie? There wasn't anybody out here. Andy. You're lying. It was Fallon. Who else would it be? Sure, the whole thing figures out easy. Now, wait a minute, Andy. I know you're trying to stop a shooting, Marshal, but it won't do no good. I'll kill Fallon on sight. Not while I'm around you, won't you? are going to go back to Dodge with me, Andy, and we'll have this out there and without gunplay. Now, let's go. Don't worry, Millie. Here. Annie and the Marshal. Yeah, I seen them. I've been waiting for them to leave. How long you been here? Well, long enough to see Andy ride up. He knows it was you. He knows you've been visiting me. The Marshal told him. The, the Marshal told him. What kind of a lie is that? It's true. You told him, Millie. Nobody else could have. You got me in a fine mess now, hadn't you? I wish I had told them. I wish I had. You're no better than the rest of them. Prettier, that's all. You get out of here. Not quite yet. First, I'm going to teach you a lesson. I'm going to teach you to keep your mouth shut. Get out of here. Like I said, not quite yet. I ain't saw Fallon around town all day, Mr. Dillon. He may be here at his office. He better be. Well, Andy, where you been? I looked everywhere for you. Where's Fallon, Jenkins? I don't know. Take a look out back, Chester. Yes, sir. Maybe you wouldn't mind telling me what's going on here, Marshal. Like Andy said, we're looking for Fallon. Well, Fallon's going to be looking for him. He finds out Andy's been loafing on the job. Fallon's paying Andy too much money as it is. Not for long, he ain't. You're getting a dollar a day more than you're worth, Andy. Whose idea was that, Jenkins, to pay him that money? It wasn't mine. I'm only the clerk here. Besides, I don't have no reason for it, do I? But Fallon does, huh? Ain't nobody back there, Mr. Jones. All right, where is he, Jenkins? You sure you want me to tell you, Marshal? Did he go out to Andy's place? He was looking kind of worried after talking to you last night. Oh, and then he is out there. He sure is, and you're looking mighty stupid, son. Running all over the country while Fallon's out there courting your wife, having yourself a fine time. Why, you... Come on, Andy, it. don't waste your time. Let's go. Come 
see no horse. He sure he must have come afoot. I just got a feeling that there's something wrong. Andy. Millie. Millie, what happened to oh, you? Andy. Well, what happened? Are you hurt? I'm all right. Fallon. Where's Fallon? He's here. I know it. Now, where is he, Millie? In there. In the house. Fallon. He got shot. Who did it, Fallon? Who shot you? Millie. Millie? I tried to beat her. She shot me. I ain't doing so good. you tell me that first day? I didn't want any trouble, Andy. But I was wrong, too. I'm not telling you. Well, the trouble's all over now. I was going to the river to wash when I heard you ride up. Come on. I'll go with you. This is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. There's nothing like the reliable Kellogg way to get the effectiveness you want from brand. Kellogg's All Brand is the real Battle Creek formula with more of the vital brand bulk to help you keep regular. Low in calories and mighty appetizing. That's Kellogg's All Brand. And take advantage of the special rose bush offer now on the package. Famous queen of the garden rose bushes, six formally patented varieties, every one a beauty, at just a fraction of their usual cost. Yours for only 50 cents a bush when you include a box top from reliable, effective, Kellogg's All Brand. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Mr. MacDonald. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Vic Perrin, John Daner, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Have a happy habit, fun day through Friday, with Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney on the CBS Radio Network.